I'm Jordan. Today I'm going to be interviewing Mr. Taylor. I've really been interested in interviewing him for the last two weeks because I really want to know more about FFA myself. It's been it's been a pleasure getting to know about it and get to let my friends know about it. There we go. Let's do it. Hello. I will, I will be interviewing you today about what your interests are in FFA and what and why you wanted to be an ag teacher. Ready? Question one. What what did you do that to make you interested in what FFA was about and why it was interesting? Hey Jordan, thank you so much for that question. Uh, my name is Walter Taylor and I'm one of the agriculture educators here at the O'Connor Falls Public Schools located at, at the high school. Uh, one of the things that got me started in agriculture education is uh, growing up in high school my egg teacher was also my employer for my SAE and I had some background working on my grandparents farm and I really found that fascinating. As I looked at all the different career pathways I learned that I really like animals and the environment, the, the plant sciences and the food science uh, and that's kind of what drove my passion. How do I just pick that? When I looked at different jobs and careers out there and I, I tried to figure out what universities and tech schools I'd want to go to, I finally landed landed in the, the crew field of egg education because I want to continue to work in all of those different sectors and why not get kids excited for different careers and pathways uh, within those uh, major categories in agriculture. So that's what brought me to UW River Falls to study agriculture education. I taught five years previously at Plymouth High School and have been at Ocana Falls High School for four years and trying to inspire people and to understand what it takes to work in our industry and I also really love that students can get their hands dirty, they can experiment with different plants and animals and foods to see if, if, if they can also be successful in these different career pathways. Okay, next question. Oh. So what do you do to manage the greenhouse and the aquatics to make sure they're healthy and they're staying running how they should to keep them lasting over the years? My first amazing answer is I have students to do that for me. But we have, to, we have to back load and front load different information for those students. So as they come into the high school, we have an agri-science course where the students get a chance to, to tinker with different idealisms within the plant industry uh, here in this greenhouse uh, to, just to get exposed to how it operates and the different plant materials we have and the protocols that I have for this uh, sanitation in this greenhouse and watering in this greenhouse and insect management, uh, IPM, everything that goes with it. Then we have students that are in aquaculture classes and aqua science and manage all the different aeroponics and hydroponic systems like the tomatoes behind me. And we get to greenhouse management and my landscape floor culture class. Every class has a piece of working in this house. And I also have a greenhouse manager each semester that helps me catalog all of the data. You see there's different blue and yellow cards, sticky cards in here. Uh, that person gets a chance to be the data log manager of that. They, they start the bulbs, they start the seeds, uh, they start cuttings, and they also monitor what other students are doing in classes just to make sure we're keep every, keeping everything biosecure and that we have healthy uh, crops growing here in the greenhouse. And, and everything from bugs to fertilizer management to airflow to water pressure, they, they are my eyes and ears in this greenhouse to make sure everything's running properly. All right, next question. So what what type of ag classes did you take in high school to get you like interested in wanting to become part of this? Uh, Jordan, that's a neat question. I was actually just back in Howard's Grove High School this last weekend uh, working with, actually my ag teacher has retired since then. I graduated in 2006. And a former student of mine is actually the new ag teacher in that district. So her and I were collaborating on some different projects uh, for her students and my students here. Uh, and so I was looking back at what classes did I take. I took livestock management, I, I took vet science, I took greenhouse management, uh, I took wildlife and forestry. Uh, and foods were not part of the agriculture program in that district. So I actually took my culinary classes with Mrs. Madden downstairs in the food kitchens. But just an amazing opportunity that I had, and it's fun to give back to these kids here, so that way people can have the same type of experiences that I've been fortunate to also uh, be a part of. Okay, that very well explaining. You've seen to know tons of stuff about agri-science. And, and it's fun. It's and very it, interesting. It is fun, Jordan, and, and I really, this is just what I do here from 
7.45 until 3.45 that people see me every day. Uh, All I know. gets up early in the morning. They have a lot of things that they have to get ready for school at night, getting stuff prepared, running errands to make sure that labs can run the next day. Um, every one of our FFA conferences that we're at, we're, we're busy doing training and collaboration time between teachers in this state. Uh, I was talking to a kid during learning lab today. Uh, there's 338 teachers in the state of Wisconsin, and I know most of them. And I'm friends with them, and uh, we work really, really well together to understand uh, the successes we've seen, maybe some of the, uh, the weaknesses that we have that we need to improve upon, and it's, it's a great way to work together. Tonight I'm working with the Lena Egg teacher after school on, on breakfast on the farm pieces and, and joining Suring and Gillet Egg teachers as well. And then on Friday the Suring Egg teacher is coming to observe me. So it, we give back to each other that way just to help make sure all of our students are ready for the workforce someday. All right, very well. All I know is that you're really very lucky to become part of this industry and how well you know everything. It's just a miracle how you could come to know that much about one subject. It's amazing. And I'm only 32 years old and I'm still learning. And I hope I keep learning all the new things that agriculture has to offer and can keep bringing that to all the students here at Crown Falls High School. Very nice. I have one more question for you, and it's about about how interesting was FFA or the agriculture business back when you were five years old, or four years old, in, in the elementary age. In the elementary age, and you know, I'm glad that you bring that question up, Jordan, because what did I do in elementary school that I remember? I remember doing breakfast on the farm. I remember a farm day that a bus came and picked us up and. We went out to the farm and looked at baby calves and learned a little bit about where our milk came from and our cheese, and that was super fun as an elementary student. One of the new things that we're bringing back this year at Ocado Falls Public Schools is that our FA chapter students here at the high school are going to be uh, showcasing Blazer Farms this spring and bringing our fourth grade and kindergarten students out to uh, that farm to in enjoy what's going on there. And then the, the first, second, and third graders will be coming up to the high school here. To, to see the other different aspects of our program and really get to understand agriculture at that elementary level. Oh, good job. Okay, I think we're done. You seem to have enough information for me to conclude this video. I had normally like six questions, but you just, just were so good that I just... Ate up all your time, huh? Yeah, I ate up all my time. <laughs> so. All right. Thanks, Mr. Taylor, for the interview. It's been a pleasure getting to know about it. Let's see what Mar Marissa's doing. Hello there, Marissa here. ACTs are coming up. Have you studied yet? I bet not. Let me help you. And now that you have all these wonderful tips, good luck. Now to you, Keith. Uh-oh. There you are, sitting all alone again. Are you so bored? Do you wish you had something to do this weekend? I'm so bored. I wish I had something to do this weekend. Then look no further than your O'Connell Falls High School Performing Arts Center, where your drama club will be performing Sleep in Chains, Jekyll's Nightmare, a take on Robert Louis Stevenson's classic thriller, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Here to tell us more about this play is the director, Mr. Gander. All right, Sleep and Change, Jekyll's Nightmare, is a theatrical twist on the original story of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, they've taken some of the same characters, altered some of them. It should be um, interesting, I think, for our audiences. Something we have never done before. With a willing, eager, and diligent cast, we ask Mr. Gander how he thinks the show is coming along. It's coming. We've had, we've had a shorter amount of time this year to get things ready. Um, I think, really, we've been okay with the weather, as in past years we've been hit hard, but um, this year it tends to be more uh, illnesses affecting the group. But everyone's been working hard and doing what they can and got one more week to go.
So don't sit around bored all weekend. Come and enjoy a wonderful show put on by your friends. All tickets will be sold at the door prior to the event. With any questions, contact the O'Connell Falls High School office at 920-848-4467. That's 920-848-4467. Sleep and Change, Jekyll's Nightmare will be performed February 29th at 7 p.m. and March 1st, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Hey, I'm Grant, and I'm going to be talking about girls basketball. <laughs> The girls had a good season. They are 18 and 6 overall and 14 and 5 in conference. And they just wrapped up their season last night against Luxembourg Casco. And they will be at a four seed in the playoffs. How is your season going? It's going good. Um, JB's winning a lot of close games, and it's really good. Uh, what made you want to start doing basketball? Um, I started when I was little because my parents wanted me to and just to be active and have some fun. What is the highlight of your season? Um, last night at Menasha scoring the game winning three. Um, and your favorite part about basketball? Um, just going after school every day and having fun with my friends and getting close with everyone. How is the season going? Really good. We've been working together and winning a lot of close games, and I feel like all the girls have gotten super close. What made you start to do basketball? I started basketball when I was in third grade just to like hang out with my friends and be involved and stuff. What is the highlight of your season? The highlight of my season is when we beat Little Shoot when Lexi had a buzzer beater. We all went crazy and stormed the court. It was a fun game. Um, and what is your favorite part about basketball? My favorite part about basketball is every year you just get closer and closer with your teammates and, I don't know, it's just fun to play and travel on the bus. <laughs> How's the season going? I think it's going really well. Like, we work really good as a team. Um, what made you want to start doing basketball? Um, when I was younger, my parents, like, told me to do it and I just love it. What is the highlight of your season? Um, when we almost beat Wrightstown and usually they beat us by 50. And your favorite part about basketball? Um, being a part of the team and making memories with new people. I went to the girls game for a little show and here are some highlights. <laughs> shoot 50 to 48 in overtime on a buzzer being layup by Alexis Euclid. <laughs> this was great reporting girls basketball, now off to you Mason. Oh hey, didn't see you there. I'm Allie and today I'm making valentines for the student body. You may be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, Valentine's Day is a great holiday and everybody deserves to feel loved and appreciated today. Let's go check out the materials. First, we need to change this outfit. Let me do it on the box. Do you guys want some suckers for Valentine's Day? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh, my God.
Kelly, let's go find love. Our first step to find love is to go interview FBLA. And they told me that they will take all of the matches and they all send them into one big company and send back all of our answers. How do you feel about being my number one match? Um, I don't know you, so... Oh, that's alright. You know. Sorry. And do you believe in love at first sight? Depends. Alright. Alright, Ethan, how do you feel about being my number two match? Uh, it's cool, I guess. <laughs> and then do you believe in love at first sight? Uh, not really sure. Oh, alright, thank you. What's this for? For my video productions. Alright, so how do you feel about being one of my bonuses on my Valentine's Day match? It doesn't change anything whatsoever. Okay, um, do you believe in love at first sight? That's a very complicated subject. Alright, Grant, how do you feel about not being one of my matches this year? Um, kind of disappointing considering we're best friends. Right? And do you believe in love at first sight? No, because I just don't think you can catch like that strong of feelings for somebody after just seeing them. Thanks, Grant. Yeah. Hey, Rissa. How do you feel about not being one of my matches this year? Kind of And do you believe in love at first sight? No. Oh. <laughs> so, none of those matches really worked out very well for me. And I also do have a boyfriend, so that's probably a huge factor in the fact that I'm not trying to find another true love. Now do you Panther News. Thank you for watching Panther Productions episode 6. Please subscribe to Panther News on YouTube. Have a great day, O'Connor Walls!